Greetings, my dear friends. I have been going through a bit of a rough patch, if you will. But I decided, well, why shouldn't I just make a few reaction videos while I keep working on the Black Paradox video. If you don't know, Black Paradox is a manga by the famous manga Kajunji Ito. It goes into subjects like climate change and cosmic horror. Now, I wouldn't go into them here because then what would be the point of making the video essay? But I will be making a video essay regarding, well, that manga and those subjects. If you are fascinated by anything of that sort, you could like, subscribe and continue being a fan, a friend, whatever you like to call yourself. But right now I am going to refresh my memory and, you know, take my mind off things by reminding myself of the Lovecraftian timeline. I haven't read an original Lovecraftian story since I was... It's been quite a while. Okay. Now, shall we take a look at this marvelous video? The Cthulhu Mythos is a combination of many books written by many different authors aside from the great H.P. Lovecraft himself. As by his wishes, he left the Cthulhu universe as an open book for competent writers to fill in the gaps and expand the franchise. This timeline is based on canonical books like the timeline of the Cthulhu Mythos, The Challenge from Beyond by Moore, Where Yidra Walks by Debil, just to name a few. In this okay, so we are not completely going with Lovecraft's own work. That's fine, that's fine. I mean, I like to use the names of Lovecraftian entities when we are talking about stuff. When I'm writing stories and all that, that's totally fine. Let's see how well this timeline functions. In this video, we shall only showcase the most important events in the timeline, especially the ones that date back millions or billions of years ago and the ones which are proposed to extend millions or billions of years in the future. Modern human interactions or birth dates are omitted as it will just be too confusing taking into account the variety of books and works by many authors. So here goes the timeline. 13.8 billion years ago, the universe is created in the Big Bang. Since it is said that we live in the dreams of the outer god Azatoth, Therefore, it is also the time when the idiot god himself went into his deep eternal slumber. 4.5 billion years ago, the planet Earth is formed around the star called Sol, and this... I'm sorry, but shouldn't this also be where Yogg-Sothoth is born? Since Azathoth's dream is Yogg-Sothoth and Yogg-Sothoth is reality? Well, that doesn't exactly function well but maybe Yogg-Sothoth is born after Earth? During Earth? I'm not sure. I have problems with this. Okay, this fine. This third rocky planet around the Sun. Four billion years ago, Yidra is an outer god who is worshipped as a beautiful, awesome and terrible Earth Mother and she comes into being at the same time the first signs of... Okay, this isn't, well, OG Lovecraft, right? The only thing I remember was Yig for a snake-like entity in Earth. I'm not a huge fan right now, but let's go. Life on Earth arises. Three billion years ago, the Yakubians, which are a race of worm creatures whom invade worlds and exchange their minds with native life forms, sends one of their mind transformation cubes to the Milky Way galaxy. Two billion years. Wait. Isn't that also an ability that the spider creatures had in a shadow out of time? Or am I mistaking it? Were they Jacobians? I can't really remember. But they do exist after humans. Years okay. ago, originally from a dimension very different from our own, Shocknor Fawn, or the horror elephant god, travels to Earth and creates a race of humanoid beings. 
Wait. Okay. This is not exactly what I expected. Isn't it Yogzathotari? But I guess this is a different series including the other gods created by people other than Lovecraft. I mean, that's fine. That's I don't really like Shagna because it's basically just Ganesh. And I mean, Cthulhu is also basically Ganesh with the octopus head. But Cthulhu has uh, its own unique features to make it stand apart from Ganesh. But whatever. Personally, I like the version that the elder things and what were the other things okay star spawn i call the elithids well the cthulhu species star spawn they went to war on earth and before this war happened the elder things created a slave race called the, uh, what do what were they exactly called i can't remember Oh yeah, Sh Shogath. Shogath, who could sh shape shift at will and become whatever they want, but they were slaves. The elder things basically eradicated them because they tried to fight back. And the remainder of the Shogath and the whatever uh, primordial who's that remained in the creation of the Shogaths, uh, later on became sewage and from that sewage life itself emerged that seems a lot more you know like creative I, I guess I prefer it personally one billion years ago the elder things arrived on earth they land in the Antarctic Ocean and found their first city there the elder things create the proto shogoth a protoplasm being that in turn produces other creatures that acts as servitors and food for okay so shogat are human uh, shogat and human are completely different according to this timeline because of shagna creating them right for own shoknar fawn or the horror elephant god travels to earth why does <laughs> why does shagna have two names shagna fawn it's not like Cthulhu williamson or something like Earth, that and creates a race of humanoid beings okay humanoid beings they are not humans one billion years ago the elder things arrive on earth they land in the antarctic ocean and found their first city there the elder things create the proto shogoth a protoplasm being that in turn produces other creatures that acts as servitors and food for the elder things 900 to 800 million years ago by this time, the Elder Things cities have spread all across the oceans of Earth and have even adapted to living on land. But most of them remain in the oceans, however. Elder Things live in the oceans? Okay. I mean, they were found inside glaciers, so I guess sure. Their cities were on ice. But whatever, I, I could have gaps in my memory, probably. 750 million years ago the flight and besides weren't the star spawn basically the elithids or cthulhu's species live in the ocean too i guess that's why they went to war to claim earth's oceans and polyps arrive on earth and build their basal towers on the land they then there we go flying polyps they are cool but wait shouldn't the yeet be here before the flying polyps because the Yith battled the flying polyps and trapped them inside uh, Earth. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. Okay, continue. Then try to expand into the oceans, therefore sparking a bitter war with the. I imagine flying polyps as jigglypuffs, cause they are cool, and they fly and they are polyps and they are jiggle. The land. They then try to expand into the oceans, therefore sparking a bitter war with the Elder Things. However, in the end, the Elder Things, 450 million years ago, as the Elder Things rule supreme on Earth, they start to experiment on life forms and develop the first vertebrates which are fish. 
and they are allowed to evolve. 400 million years ago, the great race of Yith, fleeing catastrophe from their home world, transmit their minds to a race of cone-shaped creatures on Earth. They then drive the flying polyps underground and imprison them there. Okay. <coughs> so according to this timeline, the great race of Yith arrive later. And yeah, the Yith do just teleport their minds. I mean, doesn't the shadow out of time tell us a story about Yith being attacked by what do we call them? Uh, flying polyps? Whatever, whatever, whatever. I guess those are also gaps in my memory. Moving on. 370 million years ago, as the other things allow the amphibians to evolve and arise on Earth, Chognar Fawn, the horror elephant god, later creates the Miri Nigri from amphibian flesh as a servitor race. Why are they elephants though? I I'm not a huge fan of that that design in general. I I have seen proto elephants and they look cooler than that. This is like why why is like Cthulhu's influence already here? The star spawn or the illithids or the mind flares or Cthulhu's race haven't even arrived yet. Fifty million years. I thought they arrived first and they are. Basically, magnetic pull uh, caused other species to arrive here, but I guess that's not how that works. Ago, Cthulhu and his kin arrived from the star Zoth. The other things then went to war with Cthulhu, but they eventually make peace. Cthulhu keeps his... Make peace? Aren't the other things like really xenophobic and stuff? They killed the Shogat entirely because they uh, desired emancipation. I don't know. I I'm I preferred my version of the timeline, but whatever. Let's keep going. His current surface territories and the other things keep the rest of the planet. And at the same time, the Deep Ones swear their allegiance to Cthulhu. 320 million years. Okay, so the deep ones uh, like Dagon uh, and stuff. I can't really name Satagwa. Okay, Satagwa, Dagon, and Hydra. They are all under Cthulhu. And they are not part of Cthulhu's species. They are just servants of Cthulhu. Okay, fine. I'm okay with that. I mean, there are things that suggest that Dagon is just as high up in the scale as Cthulhu and styles arose around this time during the Carboniferous period. Yik, who is the father of serpents and a half anthropomorphic great old one, was probably involved with the reptile evolution. 300 million years ago, a cosmic cataclysm which is possibly a certain configuration of the stars, possibly a war with the Elder Gods occurs, resulting in Arlie, the city of Cthulhu sinking beneath the waves. Okay, Raleigh, right? <clears throat> but whatever, people pronounce it in different ways. What do you mean Elder Gods and War? And why does it any of that have to do with Earth? Like, why would Elder Gods be on Earth? Cthulhu isn't an Elder God. He's just a prophet of Yogg-Sothoth. Here's the thing, like... Creatures like Shabnigrath and Yogg-Sothoth are like universal creatures. Like they can create and destroy things like planets and stuff. I am i don't want my commentator to be like a power scaling video or something. But I do have problems like what about near Lothotep? What about the dreamlands? Don't they exist until humans exist? I would have assumed like Neorlothotep was one of the first beings. Zulu is imprisoned within the city. In all likelihood, the other great old ones are imprisoned around the same time. I don't think Cthulhu was ever imprisoned. Cthulhu just went to sleep. He can just return any time he likes. And he's just waiting for the stars to align. 
maybe it's just like uh, you know rick being uh, rick from rick and morty being trapped inside the dog cage from that one episode oh yeah i could have escaped any time i wanted i just waited for uh myself to be what certain or something like that i guess it's something like that 275 million years ago serpent people arise and found the kingdom called valusia they had an advanced culture of science and sorcery and are capable of impersonating any humanoid life form at will why are we even using humanoid life form as a thing because so far nothing has been humanoid the closest thing to humanoid has been well cthulhu and i don't know the, those anthropomorphic creatures uh, the shagna created which have nothing to do with humans right 160 million years ago the migo which are an extraterrestrial species are uh, from yugoth from the planet yugoth or probably pluto They are winged creatures with large claws and heads covered in antenna. The Migo are a scientifically and technologically advanced race and during that time they win a battle against the elder things above the planet Earth. Okay, I was under the impression that Cthulhu was but drove the elder things to extinction but I guess Migo is the one. One hundred fifty million years ago, the great race of Yeth, which were serpents, foiled a Yakubian invasion attempt. The Yakubians are a race of worm creatures. Yakub. <laughs> okay, fine. Great race versus Yakub. <laughs> That's the funny. Okay, fine. If you know, you know. Who invade worlds and exchange their minds with those of the natives in a manner similar to the great race of Yeth itself. I'm still confused, right? Like the great race of Yeth who went didn't even go extinct. They just sent their consciousness to the future into spider creatures in the future, right? I don't get the they are battle with the Yakubians. 100 million years ago, the elder things built huge cities both on the water and on dry land. They made Wait, didn't they do that earlier in the timeline? I could have sworn that they took most of the oceans, but maybe they didn't build the structures yet. They just made, they just hang, hung around the places. I guess maybe responsible for the appearance of the first life forms on Earth before, but at this time, their technological advancements led them to their golden age. 65 million years ago a huge meteor hit the earth and the dinosaurs are wiped out how this affected or is connected to the alien races on the planet is still unknown 50 million years ago another cataclysm strikes earth and in the crisis the flying polyps escape and take revenge on the great race of yet which sends its greatest minds to bodies on the planet jupiter from jupiter okay I guess this is where the spider crabs thing happens but what do you mean cataclysm and i i have problems with this timeline but this is just a timeline they concocted i mean i should i i don't i shouldn't but i mean i could look into that more but i'm not that much of a passionate fan to i guess check ev- exactly every detail about a timeline and i mean i find this entertaining although i don't agree with some of it it's entertaining and they did a nice job look at just look at the timeline it has like circles around circles and uh semi sectors that's really cool what time i even talking about Continue. the the great race proceed to bodies similar to their earthly ones on a world orbiting a dark star on taurus 6 million years ago 
a member of a race of insect philosophers which hail from the fourth moon of Jupiter. <laughs> insect philosophers. Okay, fine. This is definitely not Lovecraft, right? <coughs> the, but, but I mean, whatever. They could have gone for better names. But <laughs> some people are just lazy with names. Uh, exchanges minds with one of the great rays of yet five million years ago. The serpent people of the city of Yoth, an underground kingdom below the present day United States, flourishes at this time under the guidance of their god Yig. They even created servant species like the savage humanoid Vurmis. But Yops is destroyed by Yig when the serpent people turn to worship another god called Satugwa. Satagwa, okay. So is Satagwa related to Cthulhu? Or is that only a joke in this timeline? Who knows? Three million years ago, the savage humanoid Vurmis gained their freedom from the serpent people. They then create a kingdom on the surface of Hyperborea, a continent in the Arctic region, and they based on the worship of the great old one called Satogwa. Two million years ago, as the Elder Thing civilization continues to decline, they retreat to their cities on the southernmost tip of South America and the Antarctic regions. 1.7 million years ago, Ithakwa, one of the great old ones, and who looks like a horrifying giant with a roughly human shape and glowing red eyes, appears in the northernmost regions of Earth, resulting in the decline of the population of the Vurmas. One million years ago, the Ice Age is brought about by the combined powers of the Ithakwa and the Afumza, who is also a great old one similar to Kathuga. The yeah, I have never heard of these things. Burma's civilization in Hyperborea is destroyed and then gradually replaced by humans. Maybe they are in great stories. Uh, is that... what is that? Uh, whatever it is, it's, it looks cool. The cloud with a very spicy creature inside. And they too suffered in the Ice Age. 750,000 years ago, the great polar civilizations finally fall. The Elder Things retreat to deep within the Earth. At the same time, the human civilization in Hyperborea splinters and its surviving people scatter across the planet. 500,000 years ago, Homo sapiens or modern humanity arises. These earliest true humans found the kingdom of Nemedis and went to war for a thousand years with the Dragon Kings. The hum what? What? I I mean, there are enough things going on in the Cthulhu mythos. Why would... Why why introduce dragon kings? What, what are they even? And why this late? I would have personally jumped over that, but whatever. Humans win over the serpent people and the exiled serpent people for... Okay. Okay, the reptilian people were the dragon kings, whatever. Okay, fine. That's a stupid name, so I kind of got sidetracked. Um, a second kingdom of Valusia. 393,000 years ago, Lemuria, a hypothetical lost land located in either the Indian Ocean or the Pacific Ocean, is shattered by volcanic eruptions, leaving only that which ultimately becomes Hyboria. Some survivors flee and found the first empire of Atlantis. 200,000 years ago, the human kingdom in Mu reaches its height. At this time, the people of Mu worship many dark gods, including Ghatanathowa, Yathoktha, and Zoth Omok, all of which are great old ones and connected to Cthulhu. Okay. Fifty thousand BC, a race of great-headed brown people dominate southern Africa. One of their generals is among those who exchange their mind. Great-headed brown people. <laughs> okay. With one of the great race of the Yithians. Like Jakub. <laughs> Twenty-four thousand BC, the city of the Golden Gates, the capital of the Second Kingdom of Atlantis, 
sinks beneath the waves as a result of dark magic. This event also devastates much of why why do we have multiple sinking cities? Isn't Raleigh good enough? <clears throat> we have Atlantis and City of Golden Gates. The Atlantean continent. Twenty thousand BC. At this time, many great countries have arisen in the barbaric Thurian continent. The survivors of Lemuria and Atlantis have degenerated into barbarians, and around this time, the serpent peoples Valusia was taken over by humans. Eighteen thousand BC. A great cataclysm destroys the old world, bringing the Hyborian Age. And at this time, the Liliogor, which are a vortices of living power, completely invisible except on occasions when they appear reptilian, came from Andromeda. Wait, isn't there another species that does exactly that? Uh, they are from Whisperers in the Darkness. So, are they Migo? Or are they just crab people that are invisible unless... I mean, to be fair, there is another thing that is also invisible unless a, a chant is used, I guess. So it's not the first thing for a creature to be invisible and they are reptiles. So, I mean, sure, why not? Uh, and settle in Lemuria and Mew. They then used humans as slaves. 10,000 BC. This was the time of Conan the Barbarian and the Cimmerian Barbarian tribes have wiped out the last serpent people in their Hyborian city called Yanyo. Really? Conan the Barbarian is also a part of this? Okay, fine. It was also then that a final cataclysm destroys the Hyborian world and rises new landmasses moving the world into more or less its modern configuration. In later times, this event is remembered as the Great Flood. 5000 BC to 500 BC The ancient kingdoms and civilizations that are known to most of humanity rise and fall. They include Egypt in northern Africa, Sumeria in the Middle East, the Indus civilizations in Pakistan and India, and also the Mayan civilizations in South America, and later ones like the Greek civilizations, the Romans, and so on. 300 BC, the Picts, which have been around for almost 20,000 years, are shattered into several smaller tribes that feud amongst themselves. Oh, I thought he meant the pigs, but whatever. Which lead to their decline and loss of power. 200 BC, Theodotites, a Greco Bactrian official, is among those that exchange their minds with one of the great race of the Yithians. Between 82 BC and 75 BC, during this time of the Roman dictator Sulla, a quaestor named Titus Sempronius Blasus is among one of those that exchange their minds with one of the great race of the Yithians. Zero okay, right, like prophets, this is how prophets are born, right? Uh, people who can understand uh, alien things and foresee the future. From BC till 2000 AD. This is the modern history of man and of course the rise and fall of countless human kingdoms, empires and states. Of course there was innumerable dabbling with witchcraft, summoning of the great old ones and the occasional If someone summoned the great old ones that's game over for humanity. So I don't know how that works. Maybe <laughs> I, I have no clue encounters with members of other species. However, modern humanity continued to thrive and forget the ancient past filled with gruesome horror and cosmic beings. 2350 AD, Fathugwa, the king region of the five vampires, appears... What? <coughs> I mean, either way. Okay, fine. Five vampires. But this does... I mean, I like the way this puts elder things and the great race of yet and the I mm, what else were there okay the Migo and the the people of Yig and people of Atlantis there are like so many uh, creatures that just spread out and 
become their own things. It's a lot like all tomorrows, isn't it? Uh, that is why I found that to be very fascinating. Now, moving on. Just as a great flickering ball of cold blue flame, he lives with his servants within an enormous edifice upon the surface of a blue comet and its fire vampires are due to arrive on Earth during... Who wrote this, dude? <laughs> fire vampires living on a comet. Okay, fine. Fine, sure. Whatever. Good for you. This year. The far future, around 8 million AD. The time of Zothique, the last continent of Earth and home to the dying remnants of the human race. The culture is on a barbaric level and magic has become dominant over science. 50 million AD, following the final end of humanity, a new race of beetle-like insects arise. These are possessed by the great race of the Yithians, leaving their previous home on a planet orbiting a dark star near Taurus. 500 million AD The first primitive life develops on Venus. One Venusian is one among those that exchange their minds with the great race of the Yithians. And as you remember, the great race of the Yithians are... Okay, now we are just moving past humanity. That's also interesting, right? Uh, that goes back to the whole... All tomorrow's thing. Humanity is a set of values and standards and not exactly a species so as long as those values and standards are held up by something that might not even be human well humanity still survives are the ones developed by the god Yig and this is the last time that any creature from the solar system exchanges their mind with this great race the further future, 1 billion AD, the last inhabitants of Earth, a species of arachnids, live within the interior of this dying world that orbits a red giant star the sun had become. The unknown future, Azathoth, the blind god, awakes from his slumber, and then the universe just ceases to be. And with that, we come to the end of the timeline. So be sure to subscribe for more monster videos and do like and share our monster videos. I okay, whatever. So I guess you can call them monsters. This video is from Mind Q, and I I thought it was fun. I mean, I didn't agree with most of them, but it was fun. Uh, uh look forward to my Black Paradox video. Black Paradox from Junji Ito. Thank you for watching.